What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training. It's today we're going to be breaking down five different press releases that wide receivers can use, the name of each press release, when to use each press release, and then we're going to be breaking down the technique of each press release. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it teaches you a few things about press releases and how you guys can create separation off the line of scrimmage. So first release we're going to be looking at here from Justin Jefferson is called a split release. So we're going to be looking at this split release first, and the second release we're going to be taking a look at is probably the best press release you guys can use when a DB is in a situation where he's like one to two yards off, he's not pressing you, but he's not an off man, okay? So this split release is what we're going to look at first. So I'll play at full speed. So Jefferson is probably the one of the best at the split release. And it's just a release to kind of freeze that DB, obviously. That's what we want to do. We want to be able to freeze the DB, get him off that platform, or get him to hesitate, and I create some space. So a split release is exactly how it sounds. You are literally going to be splitting your feet, okay? So now, we use this when we have a head-up DB. I can use this when I have an outside shade DB. I use when I have an inside shade DB. That's why I wanted to include this first, because I feel like this is a release you can use in any given situation. The only time we don't want to use it is when he's right up on that line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going to get physical. Maybe his pad level is leaning forward. I want to use this when I have some space to operate because we can get a read on this DB. Okay. So now split release, you are bringing your back foot up even with your front foot, and your front foot is going to be stepping out wide. So let's watch Jefferson right here. When he splits like this, both cleats are in the grass. This is what we call a position of balance. A lot of receivers cannot get to this spot when they do that split release. They'll do their split release, but what they'll end up doing is that this foot will come down first, and that right foot will never get actually in the ground, and they'll just take off on the outside release, or vice versa. Their right foot will get down, but this left foot will never get down. They'll just take off to the inside release. You've got to make sure that we get both cleats in the grass on this split release so I can push inside. If I needed to, I could push outside. Like, let's see this. Let's say I had to run like a fade or something like that, and this DB took away the inside shade. That's fine. I could still react off of that inside foot and push out. But I need to get to this balanced spot. And again, you see how he has a good pad level. So many wide receivers, when they do a split release, is that they'll split and they'll be leaning back. Their chest will be pointed straight up in the air. We got to make sure that we get to this position. Good, nice, strong base. Cleats are firmly in the ground. Good pad level four. Because if this DB tries to get hands and tries to lunge at me, I want to make sure I'm in a good pad level to be able to shed the hand, combat the hand and do whatever I need to do, okay? So that's the technique behind that split release. And now, like I said, we could use it when we have an inside shade, head up, or outside shade DB, really on any given route because it's a quicker developing route. Now, if I had to run the route like, let's say, maybe a slant, right? And you love this split release. This is one of your favorite things to do, but let's say the slant is a little bit longer developing. Like maybe the quarterback's doing play action. He's doing like an RPO. I could do a split release and then set him up with some kind of a move to the outside like a diamond release, and we're gonna get into that in a second, and then break to the inside because I keep the timing. But again, it all builds off of that base split release where you're bringing your feet together. You're literally splitting your feet, getting to that balanced position, good pad level so I could burst, avoid the hands, and you see how easy it is for him to take that inside release, especially on a route like a drag, okay? So that is the first press release. We're talking about a split release. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job splitting, bursting off to the inside. Now we're going to talk about the best press release I feel to use on any given situation. But before we get into that, fellas, I want to talk to you about an opportunity we have this offseason. We are traveling to nine different cities this offseason for two day longs, four hours each day, training camps for quarterbacks and wide receivers, okay? So we're coming to Tampa, Florida, Houston, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Newark, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys want to come out to any one of our camps this offseason, we would love to have you out. Again, spots are limited. Our Tampa, Houston, and Phoenix camps, are, and Newark for that matter, are all starting to fill up pretty quickly because we're only limiting spots to 10 to 12 people per position per age group, okay? So we're splitting the camp up into youth and high school guys so you're only going to be working with guys your own age so if you guys want more information on our camps want to come out we're going to have one-on-ones seven-on-seven positional work for four hours in each day we're doing two days of this camp so we're trying to be like kind of like the anti-camp we're not going to get 150 200 kids out there and just run them through drills we're actually going to take the time to develop each athlete and get to know you guys and help your skills improve so if you guys want to come out to one of our camps you're local to one of those areas check out that very first link in that description below let's get back to this video okay so now second release here is going to be this double tap release okay so that's the name of it double tap so we had the split release first second release is a double tap now i love this release because you can really threaten a db vertical you can really threaten him to the inside with this specific release so let's watch it full speed so he does a great job hitting him with this one two and then breaking back off to the inside on a slant right so he kind of takes this little hesitation skip right here and he goes one inside move so it's like a double tap right or like a or, or a double up if you will you call it a double tap or a double up but again you want to step 
to the direction that you're going first. So he steps inside first, then he steps back outside wide, outside the DB's frame to get him to jump, and then I break to the slant. So let's talk about it, right? Now you could use this release on any given route because like, let's say you wanted to run like a fade, right? And you had a DB who's in this type of coverage, head up. You could step with the outside leg first. You can go out, then back in and threaten him back to the inside. You could work it either way. That's why I feel this is one of the best releases to choose, okay? So now, when you would use this, you could use this against an inside shade DB, a head up DB, or an outside shade DB. Now, let's talk about it, right? So when I use that double up, like it, you don't want to force what you're doing. Like, let's say you had to run, let's say this isn't a slant route. Let's say this is like a dig route. Let's say this is like a 10 yard in and you have an inside shade DB. Obviously, ideally, I would love to take an inside release on this, but I got a DB who's inside shade and he's hard inside shade. I'm going to do a double up and I'm going to throw back to the inside. I'm going to do out then back in. Now, like, let's say I had an outside shade DB and I had to run like a corner route. I would do the same exact release I would do right now. I'd step in then out because I would try to threaten him to the outside. He's outside shade for a reason. He's not going to give up the outside outside release. If you force the outside release, get a wall you right into the sideline, I would just take the inside release, work to restack, work to throw by, whatever it is. So this is a great release to use when you cannot force a route. When you have to run an inside breaking route against inside shade press. You have to run outside breaking route against outside shade press. You got to make sure that we have this in my arsenal to threaten the DB to his leverage so he keeps his leverage and I can get a free release. So make sure we understand that. Now let's talk about the technique behind this move. So when we do this double up, fellas, we obviously the second move is the more important one because that's what we're trying to sell, right? So that first part of this double up has got to be an explosive step, right? So you see Lawrence Kager, he takes that move to the inside. It's a sudden step and that step is going to push and throw your hip into the cut. You want to take that first step off of this move. You want to be quick and throw. And you see how he pushes off of that step. He throws his hip into the cut and that foot is stepping outside the DB's frame. Now this may be a little bit too wide, but as long as you bring your hip and as long as you bring your upper body, you're going to have some balance. If his upper body were to stay right here and his foot were to step out here, that'd put a ton of pressure on his knee and on his ankle. So make sure we do this, fellas, we have to step outside this DB's frame with the second step. That first step of that double up has to push me outside, has to throw my hip because the goal is to sell vertical. If it was the opposite, if I was doing it outside, if I was going out then back in, I'd want to sell the inside move. So I'd have to step to the inside. We have to step outside of the DB's frame, but stay inside of my frame with my hip and with my upper body. That's what gets you separation on this double up. And that's why I love this release so much is that when you actually can threaten vertical, nothing about this move doesn't look like he's running to the outside. Nothing about this doesn't look like he's taking a quick speed release and trying to burst up to the back corner of the fade. So make sure, fellas, with that double up release, use that in any situation, inside shade, head up, outside shade. We just have to make sure we threaten a DB to his leverage, and we have to make sure we're stepping outside of his frame to get him off that platform. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Kager here, hitting him with his one-two, throwing out wide, pushing off that inside move to get him off that platform, okay? So now, let's talk about this. This release is what we were referring to with that Justin Jefferson slant. Like, he, I know he ran a drag, when we were talking about that slant and we we're talking about that diamond release. Okay. So what is a diamond release? A diamond release. The only time you would use this is when you have an inside shade DB and you have to run a slant. Don't like it on anything else because it takes a little bit too long on anything else, but it's three hard steps on a 45 degree angle to get this DB to bite on a fade. And then we slip back underneath and run a slant. So let's watch this thing full speed. So he does a great job tacking him outside, getting the DB off the platform and then making this play on this slant. So let's break it down. So again, like I said, only time I'm using a diamond release release inside shade how we tell it's inside shade you see where his foot is his foot is to the inside shaded inside he doesn't want to give up the inside right so where is he gonna where does he have a lot of grass he's got a lot of grass to the outside so that's why this release works because he's gonna be over anxious to commit to this he does not want to let you just run right by him and run a fade nobody does in man coverage but again he ain't gonna give up the inside just freely we're not gonna be able to just run off to the inside he's gonna get right into my hip and reroute me and that's gonna screw it up maybe in one-on-ones it'll be okay but in an actual game when spacing matters it's not gonna be okay so what he does what Pittman does a great job of is again it's three hard steps so that's his first step that's his second step that's his third step and again when you take three hard steps you commit to the steps and you commit vertical that's going to get that DB over anxious and move him off the platform I got to make sure that I am selling this specific route I have to make sure that those three steps look like when I run a fade look like when I just give a quick little speed release to the inside and burst to the outside that's the only way that we get this DB to move so we got to make sure that I'm taking three hard steps that are in stride get the DB to move now what a lot of people 
they'll like to do is they'll do here. Pittman does this a little bit where he doesn't necessarily turn early, but before that cut gets down in the grass, guys will turn their shoulders and they'll turn their hips to the inside. Don't be that guy. Don't start to give away the route. Make sure that we commit to it. When you cut, everything about your body language, everything about your movement looks like you're running a fade because where's that DB supposed to be watching? That DB supposed to be watching your hips. He's supposed to be reading your body language. So if your body language doesn't say fade, that DB's not going to bite on the fade. So we got to make sure that I'm selling with that upper half and I'm taking a full three strides. Another thing guys will do is they'll come off the line right here and they'll take choppy steps. They won't be in full stride. That makes your breaks not as sudden. That doesn't threaten the DB vertical because nobody runs a fade with choppy steps. So on a diamond release, fellas, we use it against an inside shade DB. I got to go three hard steps to the outside, get him to flip those hips, get him to commit to the fade by selling with my stride, my speed, and my body language. Okay, so that is the third press release we're talking about today is the diamond release. Let's watch the thing again. Great job getting the DB off the platform and then making a play right on this slant route. Okay, so now second release we're going to, or fourth, or excuse me, fourth release we're talking about today is going to be called the squirt release, or some people call it a burst release, okay? So this is a release when you have an inside Shea DB who's kind of in this catch technique where we have about two to three yards off, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about leverage and how you can read a DB specific leverage, okay? So let's watch this. This is Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. He does a great job attacking him, giving him that move to the inside, and then making this play on the jump ball fade over the top, okay? So let's talk about it, right? So a squirt release is kind of exactly how it sounds or a burst release. You're literally bursting off that line and attacking the DB's leverage. That's why they call it that because you're squirting out over the middle, you're bursting out over the middle, however you want to think of it, right? So when I have an inside shade DB, right? Why is he inside shade? Especially on the goal line. He does not want to give up the inside shade. He does not want to let you run a slant. That's, that's his number one primary goal simply because he does not have any help over here. His help is the sideline. His help is trying to reroute you straight to, the, straight to that back pylon so the quarterback has no room to make that throw and it's almost an impossible throw. And a lot of receivers, what they'll do is they'll just take it. He'll give them the, he'll give them the outside release. He'll, they'll just run to the outside. Guess what this guy's going to do? Get right into your hip pocket, force you to that sideline. So we have to make sure that we threaten him to the inside. So what Wilson does is again, he attacks his leverage, squares him up because what's he going to do if somebody attacks his leverage? He's going to keep his leverage, right? He's not just going to backpedal. He's not going to backpedal and just give you the inside move. He doesn't have any help over there, right? So he's going to keep his leverage, but this keeps him honest. And if I can sell to the inside, so I burst out, then I give him a move to the inside, whether it's a single cut, whether it's that like double up that we were working on, where you talk about where you step to the side, you're going first in that clip with Lawrence Kager. But again, we're selling to the inside. His hips and his shoulders are selling inside. That's where that DB's watching. That's going to get him off that platform, right? So we got to make sure that with that burst release, that squirt release, I'm attacking his leverage, moving him off the platform. Then that opens up a ton of space for me to accelerate and get to that back pylon, okay? So burst release, make sure we're only using it when I have an inside shade off coverage DB who's about two to three yards off and I have an outside breaking route where I want to square him up and then I attack because when we start to square him up like this and I take the outside release what happens next time when he starts guessing I square him up I attack his leverage maybe he starts cheating to the outside he gives me the inside and then I could just go run a slant it's all based on setting the DB up when it comes to this burst release this squirt release however you want to think of it okay let's watch the thing again full speed one more time great job by Wilson attacking him throwing to the inside and then making a play on this back pylon okay so now Next release we're talking about, last release, fifth release today is going to be called a slide release, okay? So what is a slide release? I'm sure all of you are familiar with a slide release. And a slide release is where you slide a DB to the outside, get him to move off of that platform, and then I run a slant off of it, okay? So I only like this type of release on a slant or a fade, and I like it when we have a head up DB or an inside shade DB. And this DB is maybe like a little bit inside shade, not, not a ton, he's more so head up, right? now. Slide release takes a little bit of time, so we have to know when to use it. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's play at full speed. So his receiver does a great job. Palmer does a great job of sliding him outside, giving him this move, and then coming back underneath on an under route. An under route is cool, like, like a five-yard in, if you guys aren't familiar with an under route, but like a five-yard in, a slant, or simply a fade. Those are the only three routes I like this against. So now, we come off of here, and he slides to the outside. So again, when we slide to the outside, this DB has a decision to make. That's why the slide release is so great. He could either sit where his leverage was and just sit to the inside, side or he could try to shuffle with me and watch my hips and if he shuffles with me and watches my hips I should have him all day long reason why he makes that decision is because when you guys do this slide release it's super important that we attack using range so so many receivers will do this and they'll get too close to the DB where that DB could just get hands or what they'll do is they'll go too flat they'll go like they'll like slide literally like across the line of scrimmage and all that DB is going to do is just shuffle and when we break back to the inside he's going to have an easy time recovering so we have to attack using range and that's 
that's like staying on this almost 45 degree angle where I can still threaten the DB vertically, but I also am sliding lateral enough to move him off of that platform. That's the goal with this slide release. So now that DB is he, sh he shuffles with him, right? So when we give him that like little shake to the outside, obviously he's going to sit on the fade because he's watching my hips. And if I can sell with my hips on this specific slide release where I actually throw to the outside like Palmer does, that's going to get him to open up the gate because he does not want to give up that slide and go on the fade. Now, the reason why this is so great is because it builds. It builds into many different other releases that you guys can use. Because let's say now, instead of running this five yard under route, you have to run a fade route. So I have a DB who's right here. Now let's say I slide to the outside, but let's say he stays a little bit more disciplined this time. Let's say he tries to take away the slant. I could just literally slide to the same spot and then just take off on a fade because I got him to sit to the inside. Now he's thinking. That's how you make your releases look the same. That's why I wanted to include this slide release in this video because this slide is something that can open up a whole ton of different routes for you guys to actually run, okay? And now, when do we want to use this? Like I said, it's your under route, slant route, or fade route. But for the inside breaking routes, like a slant or an under route, it's when you are a later read in the play. So maybe when you have to run a slant, like and it's like an RPO slant where the quarterback and the running back are doing like some kind of action. He's reading a linebacker. He crashed and then he's giving you the ball and you can't get to the window too fast. If you get to the window too fast, timing the play's over. Or if you have to run like an under route and the quarterback is doing like a, like a three-step passing game out of gun. So he's reading like maybe a corner and then maybe like a dig or, or, or whatever it is. And you're like the second or third read. So same thing. You can't get to the window too fast. So you can't do this quick release. Okay. So that's when you would want to use it, how you want to use it. And then obviously the name of this release is the slide release. Let's watch the thing again. Full speed. Fifth release that we are learning today is this slide giving that quick little move and then bursting off on that under route. Great route there by Palmer. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And again, fellas, if you guys want to come out and train with us, nine different cities this offseason, Tampa, Florida, Houston, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Newark, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California. If you want to come out, get some great working with us, opportunity to work with us in a small group setting, one-on-one, -on -one, seven on seven with live DBs. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.